welcome to another edition, actually the holiday meal edition of Mo Health Media. And I am joined by the one and only Lisa Farmer, the host of Tasty Tuesday. Lisa, first and foremost, I want to welcome you to this episode. Also, I want to give a huge, a huge shout out to you and Maggie. We tried your Thanksgiving uh, dishes, especially the stuffing recipe. That went over really well, but I have to admit, I did stick to my pecan pie, and I did not use your pumpkin pie recipe. I will do that next year. But for those that are tuning in now, we know it's Christmas time, and I was just wondering uh, if you had any fun facts that you'd like to share that you've noticed uh, over the holidays. Hi, Guy. It is great to be back. I'm glad to hear you tried one of the recipes that we provided. Hopefully, you'll try the pumpkin pie. It really is fabulous. Um, and I did have a fun fact I wanted to share. Did you know that the average holiday meal contains over 2,200 calories? Okay, I did not know that, but I'm hoping then you're going to teach us a few things that we can do to maybe shave off maybe a couple hundred, maybe two to 500 in that range, uh, because that's kind of sounds like a big number to me. So why don't we just get, get ready to dive in and I know one of the things that you want to talk about is how to get kids involved in the kitchen and the cooking process. There are many benefits to that. So I was wondering, how do you actually get families to get their kids involved in the kitchen? And then what are some of those benefits? So I love when kids get involved in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. They love it. They want, you know, especially our little, the little ones, they really want to be part of what's going on. They want to help clean. They want to help in the house. And so it's great to start them in the kitchen around two years of age and just bring them in. A great task for them is washing vegetables. And they can do that under running water. Right now, winter squash is in season. We talked a little bit about that. Sweet potatoes are in season. So those are great items that they can help with using a vegetable brush under running water. Talk about washing hands at that time, which is very important right now too, washing our hands before we cook. But um, I love starting with that task. And I do have some recipes for sweet potatoes and that wonderful winter squash. Well, that sounds like a great plan to me. So with that, I do have to ask the question because there are some family that may have three, four or five or six, you know, kids involved uh, spanning the ranges, of course. What advice would you have for them to get them active in the kitchen as well? Because there has to be a strategy with the older and the younger. Yes. So I have some, I have some thoughts on that. And we always love to hear what families traditions and what they what they do in the kitchen to get their kids involved. But pairing the younger ones with the older ones and giving them a job. Say, like I said, the, they wash the sweet potatoes and then make the sweet potato casserole and um, give them, you know, it, then you've got a team working on the different pieces of the holiday recipe. Maybe they set the table. Maybe they make the table decorations for the name. One of the things that my family did is we always made a, the children always made a name plate for each person at the table. And then they would decorate it and draw pictures and things like that too, so. Well, that sounds like a great idea. The other thing is I was wondering, uh, I've heard you talk before and uh, I'm, I'm bringing this up, but you actually have a recipe called cinnamon ornament. That sounds like a great way to get all the kids involved. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Cause that really sounds like a very fun family activity. Yeah. So we'll share that on the website. And um, so it's a really nice activity. You make up the cinnamon dough and super easy. They smell amazing roll them out just like a, a cookie and then cut them out with cookie cutters. And once they're dry, then you let them dry and cure. Once they're dry, then the kids can decorate them and you hang them on your Christmas tree. Or once again, they're a great 
place setting, um, you know, to put it at the table and have everyone's name on the ornament. Well, I'll tell you what, if any families do that, please post those pictures to our Twitter handle at Mo Healthy Kids. We would love to see your pictures if, in fact, uh, any of the families out there do that because that would be a lot of fun. And with that, let's go back to the healthy side of, because I want to go back to the sweet potato thing. We started them um, in Thanksgiving and we take them all the way to the first of the year. So give us how you make these sweet potatoes. So this is a nut, it's a baked sweet potato recipe. And I, I will say that we do make the marshmallow topped sweet potatoes as well, but this is a really nice baked sweet potato recipe that you mix, you mash your sweet potatoes and you mix in pineapple hmm. and a little orange. And so it has a really nice sweet, fruity, um, tropical flavor. And I think you would really enjoy it. Um, so that, that we will provide that recipe for everyone. And then we also have a holiday tossed salad. Okay. It contains dried cranberries and mandarin oranges. You could use the fresh clementine or the canned mandarin oranges for that. It's beautiful. All right, so with that, uh, we have to close the menu segment on cookie day. Again, I've been in these meetings, I hear you talk about all kinds of wonderful things, but you absolutely had my undivided attention when you talked about cookie day. So talk to us about cookie day. So our tradition in our family is before the holidays, we host a cookie day. And at that time we make three or four different recipes, one of them being the cut out sugar cookies that you frost and decorate and um, all the kids get involved. We do a gingerbread house. Mm. Each child gets to do their own gingerbread house. Um, if they're young, then we pair them with an older one and they work together on that. And then we also string popcorn and cranberries and it's just a fun day where we all get together and celebrate and um, enjoy time together as a family. And I think I would love to hear from people their holiday traditions, what they do, so. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I know that, you know, our director for Missouri Healthy Schools, Laura Beckman, and I recently just did a holiday message and we were sharing some of our traditions that we do and I couldn't agree with you more. I know that I'm gonna be posting some things that we do, because as you know, Gia is now 15 years old, very creative, and I love when her and my wife get together, they bring trust, something new, something innovative, when it comes to you know providing some fun for as, as far as the food goes, and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. But all I can say is, Lisa, um, I love these ideas. I'm definitely gonna be checking out both the, the holiday toss salad and the sweet potatoes, because we, we love both of those in our families. I love the, the complex carb with certainly eating the sweet potatoes. So that's always a favorite around our house. So with that being said, where can, where can our audience or where can our viewers go and find out more about all this amazing information? Well, we definitely want them to check out the Missouri Healthy Schools website and they can also sign up for our Missouri Healthy Schools newsletter, which is a great resource. And do you want to give them the address? Uh, I will. So as far as going to Missouri Healthy Schools website, it's www.mohealthyschools.com. You can go there. You can also sign up for the newsletter there. Or obviously, if you're on Twitter, you can get, inf you can get information there. And I know, Lisa, you've got a whole bunch of awesome recipes that you've been doing, obviously, since summer began, but really excited about what you've been doing from Thanksgiving as well as now, as we're heading into Christmas time, to getting those recipes as well. So uh, my final question for you is, uh, now that we're coming to an end, what are you most thankful for in what's been considered to be the most unprecedented year in our history in 2020? but what's something real positive that, that you can come away with? Oh my goodness, that's a tough one. And we didn't really talk about that before. I, I, you know, I think 2020 has been 
a very difficult year, but we, to use one of the, your words, Guy, I think we have all, I have learned um, to pivot mm -hmm. and to see the good in this, you know, what we've been going through. There, there are good things that have come of the, the changes that we've been forced to make. And um, change is difficult, but it also leads to some really great things. So um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful for the changes I've been able, able to make. How about you? I think for me, the biggest one is, is that uh, we just finished our semester yesterday as grades were turned in. As you know, I'm a college professor. And I, I have to tell you that because of the hybrid teaching environment, which was very different, obviously having maybe 10 live students and then I'm streaming on Zoom with a live chat, that kind of thing. But just getting to know the students even more, partially because some you know, ended up getting COVID, uh, some had to be quarantined because of high risk. And I learned a lot about that process and what students were going through, especially 18 to like 22 year olds. And it, it really was, it, it made me connect with them at a much deeper level than ever before, being very understanding of all the, the pressures and stress and anxiety that, you know, students sometimes will already have, but now you put COVID on top of it. And so I'm just thankful for the fact that um, a lot, I love like at our school, how we just, you know, rallied around our students It had more student focus than ever before and just pouring out a lot of concern and, and real love towards our students. And that's to me what I'm most thankful for. I, I can say this, I was thankful that at least we had hybrid, at least I was still face to face with our students compared to what happened in the spring. So for that, I'm very grateful and who knows what January is gonna hold at this point, but I will say I'm very grateful that I had students actually physically in the classrooms that I could connect with literally on a, on a daily basis this past fall. So, um, and I know a lot of others teachers, you know, feel and share that same sentiment. So, you know, with that, I think we're very blessed. And um, so I just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and also congratulations. I understand that you recently just got married. How cool is that? Uh, no one had that on the radar, but that's okay. We, we get it. It's all right. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Um, but congratulations, Lisa, and this past year has been wonderful getting to know you and to be part of these segments that you do. Uh, you have such a great heart for um, students, uh, also for parents, and uh, I just love all that you contribute in the world of nutrition because I know I learn an awful lot from you, and uh, I know that you know parents and students uh, alike, and even administrators, we learn a lot from you. So I want to say thank you for an amazing year, and uh, I'm going to see you then after the first of the year, I will post my cookies. I might post a few dishes. So be on the lookout on Twitter, but I just want to say thank you for an amazing year. I love that. Thank you so much, Guy. Happy, well, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy yep. holidays to everyone out there. And I look forward to touching base in the new year. Absolutely. So Merry Christmas, everyone. For Lisa Farmer, I am Guy Danoff. We want to thank you guys for watching Mo Health Media, our special holiday meal edition. And with that, have a great holiday.